Okay. Now, I also have the the function generator. Uh, let's see. It's the DG4162. It's capable of uh, frequencies, or at least the sine wave, to go all the way up to uh, 160 megahertz. So I'll be evaluating that uh, uh, hopefully in a few days from now. Uh, I have a low T in their connection, and I have both scopes connected. So the first waveform uh, that I'm going to get is, uh, let's say, a square wave. And let me see if I can do 10 megahertz. Let's see if I can figure that out. 10 megahertz. Okay. And let me fix the duty cycle. Go to 50%. Okay. What did it take? Okay. Uh, yes, it did. Uh, let me see. I think the measurement on one is affecting the other one. Okay, there. I'll go ahead and put this directly. <clears throat> okay. Let me go ahead and find my hurts instead. Now we can see the edges a little bit better. I believe also you can also do the pulse. Let's see. Okay, and fix uh, the zoom, uh, the trailing end, the leading and the trailing. Okay. Okay. I think that's the best I'm going to get out of it. Okay, let me just be sure. Yeah, five nanoseconds is the best. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go with the vertical. When you press channel one. Uh, when you press channel one, you get uh, uh, your uh, channel one menu, and as you hit the hotkeys, you have DC. Press it again; it goes into uh, AC couple. <coughs> Excuse me. And then another one, a third function is ground. Now I remember that on the Agilent 2000-3000. You can't do this. It doesn't have a a way of grounding. I I believe the input and get it a, a DC baseline. Uh, the Rigo has that. Uh, let's see. I'm going back to DC. Swing this thing. The waveform down. Okay. Uh, the second is your bandwidth limit. You can turn it off. And it has three bandwidth limits, or bandwidth. You can go to 20, 100, and 200. Okay, which is a nice feature. Another nice feature to have is the input. You can set it between one mega ohm or uh, 50 mega ohm. Okay, and I believe it's doing that because it the triggering changed. Okay, so we got it triggered. Waveform looks nice and bright. Okay, one of the things that I uh, did not like, uh, I guess it was a pet peeve of mine, is on the right uh, on the Agilent. The Agilent has. Uh, I guess a display of the logo and then they display the measurements on the right side 
and I searched and there's I couldn't turn it off so I'm assuming that it's permanent the other one was that they also display information on the bottom and it's probably about one centimeter in height so what that does is that instead of having a full picture of a eight and a half as they specify or advertise it's actually a little bit smaller what I like about the Rigo is that yes you do have a menu but you can turn the menu off and uh, you have when you have both menus on that's the area that you, viewing area that you have for the scope in my opinion I mean even this is much better than what Agilent have but if you can remove these you end up having a very nice uh, display it's actually much wider than or bigger than what I expected another feature that I like was uh, on the older Rigo the one that I have up here on top I have one two three four five six so it's twelve this one has one two three four five six seven it has seven which is fourteen so you have a much wider viewing area so it kind of it's kind of like watching a uh, widescreen HD TV uh, you get that sort of a feeling that it's you're getting much wider uh, display okay now going back to to the vertical menu you have your probe and uh, you can select uh, what the probe uh, attenuation is that way it uh, it uh, it changes the scaling factor that you see here so if you have a times 100 scope uh, no a times 10 uh, scope probe or a hundred you can adjust that and it will adjust the vertical uh, volts per centimeter okay now to go back to the main menu you press this back arrow so and like I said this is the 1 meg 500 ohm and I believe you also have a invert to invert and you have a coarse and fine uh, adjustment and I'm not sure what that is but I can find out oh here it is say instead of uh, uh, clicking and uh, uh, changing from one let's see, let me see the course it's one two and five one two five uh, multiplication I guess uh, what you can do is by pressing the fine you can actually adjust the vertical volts per centimeters or at least uh, uh, you may have a situation where let's see if I can simulate that one more click okay let's say I have this where the bottom or actually where the top is exceeding if we go to course and I want to get the best most accurate measurement I should be able to okay there it is so I was able to adjust uh, the volts per division in this case it's 142 volts millivolts per division and what I'm able to do is I'm able to get a full uh, peak to peak displayed in the entire screen and then the last one is uh, the units so it has units of volts W I assume for watts A for amps and U I'm not really sure so if someone out there knows you can uh, post it on the internet and let me know what that is anyway so you can do that 